um, kind of an up and down week for the rain here. Uh, obviously, I mentioned the Seattle versus Portland doubleheader, and we'll get to that. But it started on May 31st against the San Diego Wave on the road in a Challenge Cup match. Uh, the rain would win that one three to nothing. Our player of the game defender Ryan Brown. Brown scored the opening goal of the match, and it was her, I believe, it was our first pro goal. Um, yes, her first pro goal. Uh, to open up the match there, Olivia Athens and Jordan Heidema would both score as Claudia Dickey got the start and goal and got the clean sheet. Uh, so a nice effort there. The rain remain at the top of the Western division um, of the NWSL for the Challenge Cup. Uh, but we go over here to this match against Portland in the doubleheader. Things aren't so positive necessarily. Uh, a 2 nothing loss here. Uh, in this match uh, with shutouts, we don't usually, again, give players of the match. Sofia Huerta created four chances on the match. You go with Sofia. Um, Fallon Tillis Joyce in that really played a quality game. Uh, the story of this game was really that Portland found two pockets of opportunity and took chances and scored on those two chances. Um, Sofia Smith, who's one of the best players in the world, uh, I would argue, and one of the best players in the NBSL, um, found a pocket early in the first half and was able to score on that. And then later in the match to really put the dagger in Christine Sinclair, uh, who's made some lovely, lovely comments about Seattle. Um, Oh, Lenovo scared me. I thought I had some sort of warning Uh, scored later to really put the dagger in just like I talked about in the sounder segment of things. um, The rain really weren't able to convert their chances. It was a big, big, um, there were several chances generated. There was some quality stuff, some quality pressure put on in the second half, but the rain weren't able to pull through and, and find the back of the net against Bella Bixby in Portland. Um, and they dropped this one. So we'll go to our players photos of the match here. Uh, this one by Liz Walters. You can see Fallon with the uh, Thorns players in the foreground um, celebrating a goal there, which I, I really love the framing of this photo. Um, and then this one as well by our photographer, Liv Lyons uh, after uh, the Sophia Smith goal, uh, Quinn uh, walking off the pitch while well, walking on the pitch here and sort of some disappointment uh, looking, looking, you know, the, the, the win over San Diego, as I mentioned, good to get that to continue to build in the challenge cup um, towards that prize money um, remain atop the Western division. That's great. That's great. It's great to see Ryan, Ryan Brown score and continue to play some solid minutes. She'll be needed um, when the world cup break comes around. Olivia Athens getting on the board a few days before her birthday. So happy late birthday to Olivia Athens. Uh, Jordan Heidema to continue to kind of roll, especially in Challenge Cup matches um, as the 2023 season progresses on. This Portland match, I mean, you know, it's Portland. Yes, it's very frustrating to lose the Portland Yards rival, um, especially considering that they really only found two pockets and they scored on those two pockets. Um, it's not as worrisome as the Gotham match where you kind of got decimated and you were left wondering what's going on. You've got all these internal questions. Yes, the finishing needs to be addressed. Yes, uh, the rain need to be better in terms of that. Um, Because especially as of late, if we go to the rain's recent run of form in terms of how they've been scoring, hasn't necessarily been great. Um, Yeah, nothing against Portland, uh, not Challenge Cup. 4-1, to yes, it's quality against Angel City. 1-4 to against Gotham. Uh, You lose, you don't score against Courage in that loss. Score two against Houston. You draw against Angel City. It's kind of been here and there, you know, that the April, April was solid because you, you had that game uh, against Chicago where you score five to two, you beat Angel City two to nothing before that. But I understand it's soccer. You're not going to win five to two all the time, but just seeing the amount of chances generated um, and not being able to convert is frustrating. I know that the rain do have some a good amount of players on, on injured, you know, with Rose Lavelle still being out and probably being out until the world cup. Uh, Angelina is still out. Um, She may be getting there. Uh, Luani is still working through training and so getting up and to being ready for the NWSL level. Um, Phoebe McLaren continues to be out with that back injury. So that stuff. And just Fishlock, I didn't even mention that. I apologize. Just Fishlock wasn't even uh, available for this Portland game. She was a late, um, a last minute sort of out. She wasn't on the injury list. Uh, we had seen her the day before uh, for the joint press conference that was done. Um, she just didn't play in this one. She picked up a late injury per Laura Harvey. So hoping that isn't something that keeps her out. Um, 
long term. But yeah, I mean, the rain did not have essentially their heartbeat in this match against Portland. And, you know, uh, our friend Bella, Bella Munson mentioned that <laughs> having just fish luck not play against Portland's like a sin. It's against nature. Yeah, she was right. So uh, that was frustrating. But in terms of the general week, as we move over here to team related news, there's some good stuff here. Um, in team related news the first bit of news on may 31st the club appointed leslie galmore as the general manager she now oversees all areas of the club's first team operations uh galmore joins the club after serving as commissioner of the girls academy since june of 2020 excuse me when the development program was first formed under galmore's leadership the girls academy has become the le leading youth development platform for female soccer players throughout the united states in only three years uh, the Academy has helped develop over 13,000 female athletes in 91 clubs. Wow. Uh, making an immediate impact towards the growth of the sport in the U.S. Additionally, within the first two years of the GA League's official launch, over 1,000 players have committed to continue their soccer journey at the collegiate level. Uh, Gallimore is rooted in the Pacific Northwest. She spent 26 years and uh, seasons with the University of Washington women's soccer team as the second head coach in program history from 94 to 2019. The former Husky coach made 15 NCAA tournament appearances, broke numerous records, and twice earned Pac-12 Coach of the Year awards in 2000, in 2000 and 2019, becoming only one of five uh, Pac-12 coaches to ever do so. Following her career at UW, she was inducted into the Washington Youth Soccer Hall of Fame in 2019. And recognition for over 20 years of excellence coaching players on and off the field, joining Oil Rain Academy Executive Director Amy Griffin in this honor. I could go on about Gallimore's accomplishments, honestly, but uh, I had known that last week, I think I might have mentioned it on the uh, segment last week, that the Rain were close to naming a new general manager. But to see it happen, to see it someone who's local, who knows a lot of these players already, um, and has a long quality background um, uh, of qualifications is, is solid. You know, I know that it was there was a lot really going around the club with um, not having a dental manager and being up for sale and all all this sort of stuff. But so to see someone like Gallimore uh, be appointed, we've got her uh, opening press conference tomorrow, June sixth. Um, that was really great to see personally. So, um. We move forward here. More good news. On June 2nd, the club extended Ford Elise Bennett. So Gallimore went straight to work, um, extending the Ford out of the University of uh, Washington State University. I apologize. Right state, wrong school. Um, Bennett was the seventh overall pick in the 2022 draft by Kansas City, obviously being traded here uh, to the rain. She's extended through the 2024 NWSL season with an additional year option. Um Per league and club policy, financial terms of the deal were not disclosed, as they never are. Um, Bennett has played in every regular season game except for one since entering the league in 2022, appearing, uh, earning 30 appearances, eight starts, and recording four goals and three assists in that time period. After acquiring, acquiring Bennett through a trade um, ahead of the 2023 draft, the second-year forward has contributed in all 12 matches for the Reign across all competitions, making her one of three players on the team to do so. That's pretty impressive. I really have liked seeing Bennett here. I know she's a Cougar, uh, Wazoo stuff, uh, UW stuff regardless. Um, Bennett brings a really quality physical presence up top and has, has been – providing some danger up top in the last few matches for the rain. So I've thought this, I mean, just a one year deal, it's quality. And then you've got the option too, if you like what she does next year, just uh, as I mentioned at the height of team news, when I said it's a lot of positive, it's a good, it's, it's a positive uh, signing here. And again, I mentioned Gallimore straight to work. Uh, we go over here to June 5th today, this morning, uh, two rain players were named to the best 11 of May in the NWSL. Uh, the first, we got Megan Rapino, so the forward, one of the Rain Originals, obviously notched four assists in the month of May. She earned her first assist of the month against the Dash uh, on Veronica Latsko's game-winning goal. Rapino continued to shine in May, earning her first ever three-assist performance in the Reign's 4-1 to win over Angel City. With those four assists in May, Rapino became the OL Reign all-time assist leader with 25. It's her uh, eighth time being named the NWSL Best 11 of the Month. And she's now tied for fourth most team of the month honors in the NWSL. Uh, the other one I mentioned her name already for Veronica Latsko, 
Uh, Lasko had a three-goal month for the Reign, beginning her scoring on May 6th in the Reign's win against the Dash, as I mentioned. The Tenacious forward scored the opening goal of the match in the 53rd minute, marking her first of the 2023 season. Later on in that match in the 68th, she assisted uh, her teammate in the second goal with a cross to forward Jordan Heidema. Lasko also recorded her first ever brace in the month of May against Angel City, uh, as you can see in the photo there. Uh, her goals were two minutes and 16 seconds apart, making her the second fastest player to record a brace for the reign since Nahomi Kawasumi in 2014 at two minutes and 13 seconds. Lasko finished the match against Angel City with a career high six shots, uh, and it's her first time ever being named to the end of the cell best 11 of the month. So, congratulations there, uh, to Ronnie. So we look ahead here for our rain who will try to sort of bounce back from this loss to Portland. Um, when it's a rematch uh, of the NWSL semifinal against Kansas city, the rain set of a four win five win, pardon me, four loss, one draw record. They are fifth in the league table at 16 points. They're first in the uh, challenge cup standings of the challenge first in the West division of the challenge cup with seven points. Their next match June 10th versus the Kansas city current. That is a seven o'clock game that is here at Lumen um, in Seattle. Let me get what that's on in case you would like to watch that. I encourage you highly to go to that match. It is the pride match. Um, and we'll be there for that. Of course, that will be on Paramount plus. And if you have TSN plus, it will be on TSN plus. I do not, I'm not Canadian. Um, <laughs> 